Alright, this is John Kobo with OKRod.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you guys, and this is a episode that you guys requested on Instagram. I posted a picture of my uh, live raw uh, tempeh sandwich. It's totally delicious. So I'm gonna make it for you guys. It's super simple, super easy, and you know I come up with a lot of different recipes when I'm traveling. Because when I'm traveling, you know I don't have all my different kitchen appliances. I don't have a juicer. I don't have a blender. Actually, I do travel with a cutting board and have some knives and whatnot sometimes, but pretty much I don't have any equipment. So I try to like figure out like, hey, what can I make when I travel that's gonna be really delicious and nutritious for me. One of my favorite videos and episodes that I made before is I make these uh, simple nori rolls and I just travel with some nori and some dulse. And then all I need to pick up at a store, which most stores carry, is the uh, sprouts and uh, some avocado. So I basically could put the avocado in the nori with some sprouts and sprinkle some dulse in there, roll it up and have nice little easy simple wraps to make that are actually quite delicious. Now the new thing that I'm making now here on Maui, Hawaii, they have the Maui Tempe Company. It's amazing. If you, ha if you don't know about the Maui Tempe Company, be sure to check the link right down below. My last episode I visited the Maui Tempe Company and explained how Maui Tempe makes their tempeh different than virtually all other tempehs that you guys have ever seen. Number one, it's not pasteurized like most tempehs. And uh, number two is they use adzuki beans, organic adzuki beans, instead of soy. So yeah, and uh, also the other thing that separates them is actually they put a batch date on every batch of tempeh they make, and they basically replenish supplies in the local stores in the area here on Maui uh, every couple days. So two times a week the stores are getting new deliveries so that means you guys are going to get the freshest tempeh. And here's a trick. I've had tempeh like come off the line, off their production facility and I've eaten it like you know right then and there. It's always the best, the freshest. Once it goes into refrigeration, maybe it's been sitting for a few days, you know the texture is not quite as good. It's not quite as fluffy or delicious. Anyways this recipe will work no matter what kind of tempeh you have. Of course I would encourage you guys to you know, buy some unpasteurized tempeh. If you guys go to your local health food store, it's wrapped in plastic and whatnot in the refrigerated section, that stuff's totally pasteurized. So it's not, uh, I would not consider it a live food. Now tempeh technically isn't really even a raw food because to make the uh, adzuki bean tempeh that I'll be showing you guys tonight, they take the adzuki beans, they, uh, they soak them, then they cook them, but then they take them and then inoculate them with the mycelium spores and then they basically uh, allow those to uh, incubate and ferment. So this is actually a living food product that I'm holding. This has been under refrigeration here but yesterday I did a shoot all day and I got this tempeh. It was cold when I got it, came out of the fridge. I put it in the car and uh, when I got out of the shoot I felt the tempeh and it was actually burning hot. I mean it probably wasn't burning hot but it was probably around like 90 something degrees. The tempeh became active because in the refrigerator it kind of puts it into a hibernation mode. It became active and it's starting to work to digest and pre-digest the beans uh, that they're living on. And in addition, you know, you're going to get the special uh, beneficial probiotics in the tempeh plus all the metabolites that the tempeh spores are making plus also the pre-digested beans. So it's a very valuable food and I'm glad I could include this in my diet, you know, not being too dogmatic because I, I believe the beans are a food that too many raw foods do not simply eat enough of. So this is the way uh, in a fermented way where I consider it live is how I like to eat my beans if I'm not eating them raw. So there's plenty of beans you could eat raw. You know I like to eat garden beans raw. Eat, I eat uh, runner beans when they're young in their raw state. I grow sugar snap peas and uh, snow peas in my garden. I love to eat those as much as I can. And of course, you know, there are certain beans you could actually sprout and eat. I do not recommend this for all kinds of beans, but things like lentils, of course, one of the best ones you could grow and sprout. Mung beans, even some of the adzuki beans you could grow and sprout and eat to get some of the benefits of the beans into you. There's a lot of research on it. You guys could check it out more at nutritionfacts.org. Dr. Greger does a great job to uh, uncover the facts on 
the beans. Oh, also, can't, can't got to mention, uh, Dr. Joel Furman loves the beans as well. So I want to encourage you guys to eat some beans more often. And the best way to eat beans, uh, based on my research, is the tempeh because they, uh, you know, soak them, cook them, and then inoculate them, ferment them, and they're uh, more broken down, so you're going to get better absorption of the nutrients. In any case, without further ado, we're here today to show you guys how I make my live raw tempeh sandwich. Only requires a few ingredients, all right? So number one, I talked about the tempeh. Batch date of just a few days ago. Other things you'll need are the fixins for inside the sandwich because the tempeh will serve as the quote unquote bread. And it's an amazing bread at that. Anyways, we're gonna use some fresh cut up tomatoes here, some uh, local grown uh, sprouts. I got a clover daikon uh, alfalfa mixture. Also, we got Maui sweet onion. Very important. I like the sweet onion, not the hardcore onions that are too hot. And of course, we got local grown avocado that I harvested and picked myself on a farm a little bit earlier. Now, a sandwich would not be a sandwich without the ketchup and the mustard. So here on Maui, there's a cool company, man, and it's called uh, Rain Aloha Raw Rainbow Foods, and they make this stuff. It's actually called a crouch up and it's uh, red on the inside. So this is like a ketchup and uh, the ingredients, so you guys can make it at home if you're not here on Maui to buy this stuff. It's basically ingredients, sun-dried tomatoes, cultured red cabbage, so that's basically like sauerkraut, uh, apple cider vinegar, agave syrup, and Kona sea salt. So I would kind of change the recipe a little bit and if you guys thumbs up this video, I'll work on making a uh, crouch up uh, video for you guys once I get my uh, recipe dialed in. I'm gonna use um, I'm going to make a cultured red cabbage, no problem, so I just make sauerkraut. Then I'm going to probably use that soak water to soak some sun-dried tomatoes in, right? And then uh, blend those two up. At the same time, I'm going to add a little bit of apple cider vin vinegar, uh, maybe some miso for some salty flavor, and instead of the agave syrup, which I don't like agave, I would use actually some, uh, maybe some, uh, some dates, right? And maybe if you don't want to use the dates because they can take a while to blend up, use some uh, date sugar, which is basically just uh, dried powdered dates, all right? So we got the uh, crouch up here, which is like the ketchup. And then of course, we got the mustard right here. So once again, a Hawaii Aloha Raw Company makes the Kraut Must Art. <laughs> and that's this one right here. And you guys can see, look at the colors on this, right? This is red and this is uh, yellow, just like, uh, you know, the real thing that we're used to. <laughs> but this is a raw version, healthier version. So this uh, first ingredient is cultured cabbage, so I could only think that's probably just standard green uh, sauerkraut. And then they blend that up with some uh, ground up mustard seeds. They add apple cider vinegar, uh, pure water, Kona sea salt, agave syrup, and a turmeric. So once again, you know, I would swap out the agave syrup, uh, you know, for some dates, and maybe use some uh, miso for the salty flavor. So yeah, that's what we're using tonight. Super simple, super easy. And then we're gonna go ahead and open up this uh, tempeh. And I like that this is actually double wrapped in paper, so no plastic packaging. Really cool, my girlfriend loves this a lot. She hates plastic more than I do. We're gonna open this up and inside the outer wrapping, which you could use for like a nice little placement, uh, they got an inner wrapping. So we're gonna go ahead and open that guy up. And now inside this inner wrapping, uh, what we got here, are uh, two small tempeh blocks. Now this is a special kind tempeh. Normally if you buy the tempeh, it's in like one large kind of block like this. Uh, I got them to give me the, uh, the burger style patty blocks that's usually only available on special order. But I like these guys because this is like sandwich size already. Uh, on the bigger blocks, I would normally just cut those in half and then slice them in half again. So on these, you know, these are actually quite thick. So you don't want to use each one of these as a bread itself. And I, I do want to point out there's actually some black looking stuff on here. And that's a nat uh, natural sporulation of the tempeh. It's fine to eat if it's like kind of black and maybe even a little bit fuzzy. But it's not all right if it's blue, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take one of these tempeh burgers. And we're going to take a knife and we're just going to go ahead and carefully uh, cut this baby in half. All right, so it looks like I got that cut in half, so here's the whole thing, and then once we cut it in half, we basically have uh, two slices of bread. Super simple, super easy. So uh, once we got the two slices of the bread, or the tempeh, then we're just gonna go ahead and butter them up. So first we're gonna go ahead and uh, put on some of this uh, raw fermented ketchup on both sides. 
and uh, spread that nice. All right, now that we got the ketchup layered on there really nice, we're gonna go ahead and open that uh, mustard here. And we're gonna go ahead and spread, uh, stir up some of this mustard and put it on. Now the mustard, it's a lot stronger than this ketchup stuff, so you know I'm not gonna put that much. Uh, you could almost eat the ketchup stuff like straight, but if you eat the mustard straight, it's kind of gonna like burn your mouth, kind of like you're eating like wasabi or something, because that you know mustard's quite spicy. The mustard actually has anti-cancer properties, uh, which is quite cool because uh, mustard seeds are actually a brassica family uh, plant or related to like uh, kale and cabbage and whatnot. All right, so there you go. We got the mustard and the ketchup on there. Uh, next step, super simple, super easy. We're just gonna go ahead and take the fixings and. Uh, put them on so we'll start first with maybe like I'll put a tomato on uh, one side and then the other side and then we'll take some uh, onion rounds here maybe just like put that on one side we're gonna go ahead and take a nice uh, heaping amount of sprouts and uh, put that right on as well you gotta put lots of sprouts man you gotta make sure you eat your sprouts and uh, the other thing you know the tempeh is a living food as are the sprouts the sprouts have little tails. They're still growing as I'm talking right here. So they're both living. The tempeh is to the sprouts. But see, none of these other things, the avocado, the onion, tomatoes, they're not really still growing, right? They've kind of like, they're just kind of raw. So I really want to encourage you guys to eat some more live foods in your all's diet. All right, so got that on there. Now we got to put the avo. And this is local style avocado. So this is kind of like more watery than fatty. And actually, I kind of like this kind of avocado better because, like, you know, I've eaten Haas avocados my whole life and they're so fatty, but I like the watery style avocado. It's a really a nice, more different texture change because it's like a more watery and not as fatty. So I would encourage you guys to eat all different kinds of avocados when you get them. If you're on the mainland and want to get some kind of watery avocado, look for the Florida avocados or Dominican avocados. So, anyways, once we got uh, both these halves lined up, Full, you can almost eat them like little uh, sandwiches or pizzas, kind of like this. But we're going to go ahead and, uh, and put it all together. Oh, right on top of each other. And check it out, man. We got one nice, big, huge, raw, living sandwich. All right, I don't even know if my mouth is going to open up this big. Let's see. I'll try to smush this down a little bit. And now let's see if I get one nice bite. Mm. <laughs> wow, man. With the bread, really nice tempeh bread. It reminds me of eating real bread, but I haven't had real bread in like over 20 years probably. But it has a nice texture. Unlike, you know, just dehydrated um, crackers or whatever that you would normally use for the bread. It has a nice spongy, fluffy flavor, and it's a really neutral, mild flavor. It doesn't have any strong overtones of flavor, so I really like that. It takes on the you know sauces that you put into it. In this case, I really taste the mustard and the ketchup, and of course, I love the Maui onion, man. The Maui sweet onion, amazing. I got that onion uh, crunch on there. It reminds me of like eating like an A and W like burger when I was a kid. But this is completely living in raw foods healthy sandwich so yeah now you guys know how you guys can make a raw living sandwich using the live tempeh here on maui as well as just a few other ingredients if you're not able to get the tempeh then of course you know you could use uh, some kind of dehydrated crackers or whatnot but man or of course learn how to make your own live tempeh at home that's unpasteurized you just want to use it within maybe two weeks because of the temp the live tempeh is still living and uh, you know it will spoil and I want to encourage you guys eat foods that spoil those are the best foods in my opinion for you so if you guys like this short quick episode me making my live burger hey please be sure to give me a thumbs up to let me know if so I'll do try to do more recipe videos I make food every day for myself and for my girlfriend and I'd love to share more of those with you guys if that's what you guys are wanting I kind of try to focus more on the education because I think that's actually more important the more the whys than the hows also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming content and videos I have coming out every five to seven days on this YouTube channel. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Uh, finally, be sure to share this video with somebody else so they can learn about tempeh and they can learn how to make one of the best raw living sandwiches 
in the whole wide world. And be sure to check my past episodes, over 450 videos on this channel dedicated to teaching you guys how to eat a raw fruit and vegetable dominated diet the best way on earth. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.